What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 10 of our Python for Finance tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is writing the function that we're going to map to our pandas data frame. Basically, we're going to make a new column for the target. Basically, is this company a buy, sell, or hold? And we use that as the basically the label for machine learning where the feature sets are going to be the percent change pricing information for basically all companies. So. Um, just for the record, I do have tutorials based on everything we're about to cover. First of all, uh, for mapping, you could probably, you can just go to pythonprogram.net, type mapping, and sure enough, rolling apply and mapping functions for pandas. There you have it. You can follow that or, or to learn more about mapping functions. Otherwise, you'll see a quick live example here. Um, the other thing will be args. I'll show that in just a moment. So um, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is kind of... Um, we don't need to have that there for now. And what I'm going to say is we're going to create a new function. So we're going to call this buy, sell, or hold. It's conceivable we might later have like just a buy, sell. Just that way that's a binary choice because as we're almost certain to find out, um, we're, not even, we're not going to be very accurate at all. We're only going to be able to generate a very slight edge over random. So buy, sell, hold in theory, when we go to test this, our goal will be to be better than 33% accurate. <laughs> and, and then even then, once you get accuracy, it doesn't matter because what happened, what really matters is in practice. And we'll talk a little bit more about this before we get into back testing because just because you might even have a strategy that's like 70% accurate, but when it comes down to it, the areas that it's inaccurate are what could cost you everything. So anyway, yeah, we'll get there. So this is going to take one parameter, and that one parameter is args, which actually lets us pass any number of parameters. If you want to learn more about args, you also could come to the search bar, type args, and sure enough, args and quargs right there, and you can learn all about args and quargs and how they work. Basically, it's just going to let us pass any number of arguments, and we can kind of, it's, it becomes an iterable. So immediately what we can say is calls equals C for C in args. And the way this works is um, with mapping to pandas, what you'll do is you'll, you've got a function and this, what it returns, it will go basically by row in your data frame. And you can either pass really nothing or you can pass columns as parameters if you'd like into, you can pass other things as parameters too, but to, to work row by row, it's interesting because you can actually pass columns themselves and it will take that row, that columns row value and you can actually work with that. So what we're going to do is we're gonna pass um, tomorrow's price, the next day's price, the next day's price and so on, that whole week of future percent changes. We're gonna pass each of those and if any of those, again, are over some value we choose, in our case, we're going to go ahead and make the requirement be 0 0.02, which um, because our percent change we did not at the end times by 100, that means 1 would be 100% and, you know, 0.5 would be 50%. So in this case, 0 0.02 means 2%. So if the stock price changes by 2% in, in our case, 7 days, where our ears will perk up. Or if it falls by more than 2%, uh, we will want to get out. So what we're gonna say is for call in calls, um, if the column is greater than the requirement, basically what we're gonna say is like at any point in any of these columns, if that column, if, if the value is greater than what the requirement we're asking, we're gonna return one. Otherwise, again, as well, if that call is less than um, the negative requirement, whew, we almost got ourselves into trouble, negative requirement, we return negative one. Otherwise, if we get through all the columns and we haven't returned something yet because return will basically cease the function, we're going to return zero. So in our case, zero will be hold, negative one will be sell, positive one will be a buy. So. What it's going to do is it's going to pass each of the columns. And the reason why we want to do it this way is like if we actually bought this company, if if it goes up 2% at that point, that's when we're going to sell. So like if you're going to actually make a strategy around this, basically what you would do is as soon as we got the trigger that, hey, this is a company that could plausibly rise 2% in the next seven days. Okay, we buy that company, we sell it. 
uh, or we put a position or an offer for, you know, plus, I don't know, we could be conservative, well, plus 1.5% of the price we paid, um, and then also have a stop loss at negative 2% or negative 1.5% or something like that. Uh, and so our goal would be to hit that. So as long as that number gets hit first before some other crash or something, then you're totally fine. Same thing though with falls. Like if, if since we're going to be using a stop loss, if the price is going to fall more than 2% before it rises 2%, we're not interested right now. We would want to invest after that 2% fall and be happy with our 4% rise. So that's kind of what we want to be thinking about here. So, um, so yeah, so, so with that, that's what we're going to actually map to our columns. And I think I'm actually going to stop it here. This is probably going to take a while to go through the, the actual next function that is going to actually map these columns. So anyways, especially since I'm releasing these in chunks, that shouldn't make anybody too angry. So um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns up to this point, uh, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial where we actually map these to the columns. And at that point, we'll actually have our feature sets and our labels. And then probably the one more after that will be uh, actually seeing how this runs. So stay tuned for that. Questions, comments below. See you next time.